And I didn't even know it was possible for Dolly Parton to cut an outside song. So that's mind blowing to me that my hero, my like hero, the ultimate hero is singing my lyrics and my melodies. That's what. Hey, it's your girl, Emily Curl, and today we're hanging out with a country music singer and songwriter, someone I'm a huge fan of. Let's welcome in Caitlin Smith. Caitlin, thank you so much for being here. Hello. Thanks, Emily. Thanks for having me today, dear. How are you today? It looks nice and bright in your space. The sun is shining today. It's a magical day. I'm in Nashville. Um, about to just go into a session. So it's a great day. <laughs> I first want to kick it back and tell you a little bit about when I first discovered you. It was listening to Before You Called Me Baby, This Town Is Killing Me, Cheat Date on your debut Aww. Star Fire album, which I loved. <laughs> and then you go and wreck me and you drop Supernova, which was <laughs> so good. <laughs> Thank tell you. me a little bit. How did your process differ from the creating of your first debut album to then creating Supernova? Yeah. Well, uh, you get your whole life to right? Your debut record, right? I've got hundreds and hundreds of songs to choose from. It's a little bit more experimental where you're trying to figure out your sound, you know? And so first record, there's a lot uh, less pressure. And then with Supernova, it definitely was more focused where I'm like, okay, I already made this record. I know what, what works live, you know, like I had a better pic picture in my mind. And so when I went into the studio, you know, to make Supernova, it was just with a lot more intention. I wanted to dig deeper into some emotions, stretch myself vocally. And so there was definitely some uh, goals that I had going in for record two. Yeah, I want to go back for a second. It's interesting you said you found what works live. What works best for you live and what's the most fulfilling show to play for you live? Well, I am a very dynamic singer. I can't help but sing from my toes. And so um, for me, it's really those, those big moment songs. I think, you know, this record, Supernova is very, it's very dynamic. There's songs that are, you know, like they go really tiny and then there's these soaring choruses. So I, I was just, I was playing around with, um, you know, with all of that. You also have an incredible collaboration on there. I can't with Old Dominion, so good. How did this collaboration come about? Well, I dropped my record Supernova on March 13th, 2020, perfectly timed with a global lockdown. And so, you know, no one was paying attention to music. So we just decided, okay, let's try and just relaunch this record in the fall when it makes more sense. And so, you know, I decided then to, um, I wanted to add a collaboration. I wanted to add a cover, just put a couple more things on the album. And so I sat down with Shane McAnally, who's the head of Monument Records, my record label. And we kind of threw some ideas around and he was like, what about Old Dominion? And I was like, you can ask them. They're not going to say yes. Like I think they've never done a collaboration. So he asked them, played them the song. They loved it. They hopped on and the rest is history. So thanks Old Dominion. Oh my God. <laughs> now I want to talk about the song too, because this is one of my favorites on the album. What was your inspiration behind this one? And how did you know that Old Dominion was going to be right for it? So this idea came from, I've lived in Nashville for like a decade almost. So I was driving by downtown Nashville and I saw all the cranes and all the skyscrapers. And that's kind of where the idea of the first verse, this ain't a 20 minute town no more. Like, so I started thinking about change, right? That's what the song is to me and change within the city, but then also change within myself. You know, I'm not the same person as I was 10 years ago when I moved to Nashville. And so I started thinking about change and how sometimes when we come up against that moment of like, wow, I really need to get over this person. I need to fix something. I need to move on. Like, it feels like that moment of like, oh, I know I need to do this. It can feel like I, but I can't. <laughs> we all know that feeling, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. What would you say is the biggest change that you've noticed, especially for artists and songwriters and creators like yourself? I mean, Nashville is totally different than when I moved here, you know, and it used to be very music row focused, which was just like two main streets in Nashville where all of the publishing houses, all of the lawyers, all the labels, they were all on these two avenues. And as the years have gone on, you've, it's just kind of expanded out from that. Where now most people are writing, you know, in their home studios or, you know, it's kind of all over. And so it used to be where everyone would go write their songs on Music Row and then we'd go down to the bar and we'd all drink together and like, <laughs> 
there it was way way a similar closer time <laughs> yeah it was cl closer connected too yeah um and i feel like it is a lot more spread out but man it's the community's still here um and magic still happens here so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you're talking about doing a, a session after this, a songwriting session. What does your process look like? And does that always come naturally to you? Or is it something that you've had to develop a style as you've grown? I am still learning. I will learn until the day I die. It is something that you practice, right? I feel like writing is like a muscle. And so one of the biggest things I've learned as a songwriter, trying to pitch songs and just trying to create, right? It's just showing up is the most important thing, but I'm still growing and changing and trying to figure it out. <laughs> Aren't we all, you know, <laughs> that's life. <laughs> but now some of your songs have been pinned by Dolly Parton, James Bay, John Legend, Megan Trainer, which those are huge names to say the least. <laughs> what is it like seeing names like that too, sing your music? I'm sure that's a surreal feeling. It feels not real. I feel like that's a joke bio. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody just make that up? That's pretty cool. It's the biggest compliment where you create something and someone else loves it enough that they want to like sing it every night. That's crazy to me. Is there a song that you've written that you wish you would have kept for yourself? I am going to say no, because if I love it enough, I'll just record it too. I don't really think, I don't really have a problem like also releasing it. I think people like to hear the songwriter version. I think at some point the music industry got away from like recording a song more than once. But like back in the day, they used to do it all the time. There would be like four artists releasing the same song, right? If it was a good song, just yeah. release it. You know, and so there's a song like Tacoma where Garth Brooks emailed me. He's like, can I please record this song? And I was like, Yes, please. Oh my gosh, you're my hero. But I also love singing the song. And I put it I, in my set every night. As of right now, I know it's probably hard to choose because I'm sure you're so proud of all of them. But what song are you most proud of lyrically? That would have to be You Can't Make Old Friends. I wrote it with Don Schlitz, my Yoda, my songwriter hero. And um, it was recorded by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. As they're like, they, they sang it to celebrate 30 years of duetting. And it's like, to me, like the cut of all cuts. That's the one I would keep. So proud of it. <laughs> I mean, also let's like, let's talk about Dolly Parton. She is the queen of all queens, like as far as performers, but also songwriters, right? And I didn't even know it was possible for Dolly Parton to cut an outside song. So that's mind blowing to me that my, he my like hero, the ultimate hero is singing my lyrics and my melodies. That's what. <laughs> Have you met Dolly before? Have you got to meet her now? No, I've never met her. We need Dolly to watch this. Dolly, I want to meet you. I need to meet her. It's on my bucket list of life. I mean, you have this album, I Can't, with Old Dominion out now. It's so good. And in honor of that song, Kaylin, I thought we could play a game called I Can or I Can't. So I'm going to give okay. you a scenario. And you tell me if this her. is something you can or can't do. Okay. Eat spicy food. I can. Go on a roller coaster. Mm, I can't. I just hate that feeling when you're like here and you're like, feel like your stomach's gonna come out of your mouth. I don't want that. I can or I can't hula hoop. I can ish. I can or I can't watch a scary movie. I can't. Mm -mm. There's so many better movies in the world than scary ones. <laughs> I can or I can't cook an adult meal. Oh, I can. Oh, so you're yes. a good cook. Oh, I love cooking. That That's like my, it's my therapy. I can or I can't sleep in. I can, and that's I love it. it. Are you a morning <laughs> or night person? When do you when do, you do your best work? I am a night owl all the way. I like will clean my whole house at 11 o'clock at night. I don't know what happens, I just, it just turns on. I can or I can't dance. I can. I think I can, especially with a little tequila. I definitely can. <laughs> this is perfect then because my last question for you is I can or I can't take shots of tequila. Uh, every day. I can, baby, every day. That's our pre-show ritual. Really? Shot of tequila. Yes. What's, what is it? Is it Casamigos? Is it Patron? What, what's the? Both of those, whatever they have. I mean, but I'm like a tequila silver. Now, before we let you go, as we gear up for 2021, what is next for you? I know you had to pause a tour last year, but can we expect a tour, shows, music, fill us in on everything this year? Well, I am just starting to go into the studio to work on CS3. I'm working on my next record, so excited. Fingers crossed, I think we're gonna have some new music within this year. And then also, some very exciting tour information is about to come into the world, hopefully in the next month or so, but there, we are back, baby. Summer and fall, expect us to be out into the world. 
and see you in person. I'll obviously be there. <laughs> and you want to come see us at our iHeart Studios next time you're in I New York. Cannot wait. I love New York. I live for New York. I can't wait to be there. That's going to be magic. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much for being here. It's been so great <laughs> chatting with you. Cannot wait for all that's to come. And hopefully, yeah, we'll see you again very soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Emily. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching our interview with Caitlin Smith. Make sure you stream her album Supernova out now on iHeartCountry. And we'll see you next time.